this morning is our pastor and founder, Words of Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith. It is none other than our very own, the shepherd of this house, Elder McKinnon. Somebody shout, preach the word! Pastor McKinnon, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I say praise the Lord to everybody. Hallelujah. I thank God for allowing me to be here on this day. Hallelujah. Praise God for my wife, First Lady McKenna. I say praise God to all of you all. All the saints that's in the house. In the name of Jesus. I say praise God to those that are, hallelujah, watching us online on the different media platforms. I say praise the Lord to you also. And God bless you. Hallelujah. And what we want to do on today, I'm I'm going I'm to use an old adage that uh, a lot of the pastors always say. I won't be before you long. <laughs> it's my plan not to <laughs> be before you long. I tell you. But in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I ask that uh, everybody would stand and we're going to read the word of God. Now, of course, we are endeavoring to go back into choose your path part two. Amen. All right. So we're going to start with Rome. We're going to read this again because this is needful for us. Romans. This one of them days my glass was fucking up. Romans 8, uh, 1 to 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, I want to read this over, but we're going to include the rest of the reading down to 15. This is being read in the New Living Translation. So it says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Hallelujah. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. And that just requirement was sin, I mean, was death. So no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. Uh, that says those who are dominated, dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the spirit of Holy Spirit Think about things that are pleasing the spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. I like how you put that. Life and peace. If the spirit controlling you, you should have a little peace also. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. 
That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them. Do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin. The spirit gives you life. Because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. My Lord, for if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if you, through the power of the Spirit, you hear that? It says, if you, through the power of the Spirit, through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fear, uh, fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now He called. Now you call Him Abba, Father. Now, as I said last week, this message. Jesus is trying to get us to have a closer relationship with him. And how he's doing that, he's revealing sin unto us in our life. And showing us what to do with it. Because sin puts Jesus at obey. It, it puts him away from us. Or really, really, it takes us away from him. So he wants to have a relationship with you so that you can receive and reap all the benefits as a child of God that you should have. My God. Like a parent wanting to reward a, a good child for good behavior. Jesus is wanting to reward you. Hallelujah. I, I know, I understand that we are, 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 are in a society and a type of world today that, uh, well, I, man, what they call it, when everybody get a trophy. Uh -huh. No matter who wins or loses, everybody get the same trophy. Yes, we're there. That's where we're at. Sometimes in life you win and sometimes you lose. Hallelujah. You win some, you lose some. Amen. Amen. You need to learn how to deal with life issues. Yeah. Other words, what I'm saying is, if you allow sin to go on and on, it becomes a normal behavior and then you can't deal with it. Hallelujah. Mm, my God. God is wanting us to repent Amen. of our sins. Yes, because our sins are making us miss out on so many blessings and, and healing and miss out on our prosperity and, and our miracles and, and miss out on the revelation of his word to us. Yes, and if we don't be careful, we're going to miss out on heaven. If you continue in your sinful ways. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, bless us on this day. Open our heart, our mind, 
God, unto you and to what you have to say on today, God. God, change our heart and our mind. Change us, God. Give us a mind of you, God. Give us a heart of you, Father. Bless us. Let us receive, God, and, and walk forth on the right path. Let us choose the right path on this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you for your patience in standing there. Choose your path. And this is part two. Hallelujah. Choose your path. Now, Romans 8 and 1 and 2 again, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, again, uh, just to recap on last week, when you, when you go over the word therefore, it's meaning that you can, should consider something that was said beforehand or previously uh, uh, that was therefore. What is uh, Paul wanting us to consider? That there is now no uh, condemnation. And what is he really talking about? There's no condemnation. Paul is saying that there is no punishment or conviction or no condemnation for our sins. Therefore, previously in Romans, Paul spoke about sin and the result thereof. He let us to know that we was born in sin. Hallelujah. Because of our our four parents, uh, Adam and Eve. We was born to die in the family of Satan because we was born into sin and the wages of sin is death. But by the grace and the mercy of God, he devised what he called the law and he gave it unto his servant Moses to give unto us. And within that law was the, the, the sacrifice of atonement. Uh, which was the covering of blood and, and, the, and the, the, the stain of, 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 of sin or the result of it year by year. The atonement for our sins, it, it covered us. Hallelujah. Our sins. And it, it, was, it started off with Adam and Eve when they had sinned and God had killed the animals to cover them. You, you know, uh, uh, with the blood because... You know, I told you on last week how when God look at us, especially after we done sin, what he see is death because the wages of sin is death. But he did the blood sacrifices so that when he covered you uh, or when Israel was covered uh, by that atonement year by year, he was able to see the life about them. But the thing about it, the sacrifices of animals didn't do it. Only thing it did was piled our sins up year after year. Thank you, Jesus. Now, one that asks again on how do you get covered, hallelujah, up under the blood today? And it's simply by going down in Jesus' name and being filled with that precious gift of the Holy Ghost to be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's the baptism in Jesus' name. The blood is in the name. Hallelujah. He is that better way. Jesus, hallelujah, when you're baptized in Jesus' name, your sins are removed, not covered up, pushed back, but removed. Jesus is that better way. Matter of fact, he is the only way. Amen. This is why there is no, this is why there is therefore now no condemnation. Jesus has removed that penalty of sin and punishment. But as I told you on last week, as the world says, don't get it twisted. Don't fool yourself. 
Because Jesus died on the cross, you can sin all you want. Hallelujah. Not so. Romans, again, 8 and 1, it says, There is, therefore now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, in other words, he's talking to those that are in Christ Jesus. That you have no more condemnation. Hallelujah. You got to be in Christ Jesus. And you have repented of your sins and been down in Jesus' name. This is what gets you into Christ Jesus. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. This gets you into Christ Jesus. Simply saved. Simply uh, said is getting saved. Now, as we move forward on today, hallelujah, choose your path. Hallelujah. Again, I stress Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. Most people, or, or, or the majority of people, of all, all people should find themselves in one of these five following paths that I'm about to discuss. Now these five paths that I'm about to discuss, the Lord has given them unto me to give to you. And for us, I'm not saying that these are the only inclusive paths, path, hallelujah, to be discussed, path to be taken. But I'm saying this is what the Lord has gave me for right now to give unto you and to us for this time and this day. The choice which path you want to take belongs to you. Hallelujah. It belongs to you. You get to choose which path you will take. Some path leads to death and some lead to life. The first path we're going to discuss, I choose to walk the path of I do not believe in God. I do not believe in the fairy tale you call Jesus. I walk the path, hallelujah, of once you're dead, you're dead, and that's it. Ain't nothing happening after death. I walk the path of making my own choices and making my own decisions. I don't follow some God I never seen. That's all hogwash. There is no heaven or hell. It's all a man-made myth. If there really was a God, why would he let us suffer the way we do, like we do? If there really was a God, and he was a good God, and, and had all that power like you talk about, why wouldn't he just make everything all right? What kind of God would let a little child starve to death? Or what kind of God would let a little baby die? This is why I don't believe in your God. Or no one else's God. I'm on my own. I'm my own God. I make my own way. I walk down my own paths. I love being in charge of myself. Following no one and having to tell no one what I'm going to do. And, and ask somebody how to do this. And, and, and uh, uh, can I do this and can I not do this? There are many who's choosing this path. 
This past is totally flesh led. Hallelujah. This is a path of the flesh. John 3 and 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. Hallelujah. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Condemned to what? Condemned to death for your sins. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 12 says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Hallelujah. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. All things on this path is designed to satisfy your flesh. It's all about I, I, me, me, and myself. That's what this path is designed for. Romans 8 and 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Hallelujah. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Believe it or not, Jesus said that I can work with this. Can y'all believe that? Jesus said, I can work with this. Somebody that don't believe in God, Jesus said, I can work with that. Hallelujah. I can do something with that. Hallelujah. In Revelations 3 and 4, uh, uh, 15 and 16 he says I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would I will that, that thou was cold or hot what he's saying I wish you were cold or hot one or the other so then because thou art lukewarm neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth like I said, Jesus said, yeah, I can work with that. But what he can't work with is someone that is cold. Hallelujah. Or, or, I mean, excuse me. What he can work with, again, is those that are cold, that don't believe in God. Because when you get with them, and if you ever get them converted, they're some committed folks. They commit. Because they believe in whatever they believe in. And God said, I can work with that because there's an opportunity there for, for, for a conversion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Them folks be committed to life. Hallelujah. It's the mother ones that God's had the most problem with. Those performers, those that do lip service. Those that have a, a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. Uh, those that come to Jesus every Sunday just for a few hours and then go back home to Satan for the rest of the week. Jesus says, I can't do nothing with them. Because they think that they're okay. Hallelujah. Their mind and concept is that I am all right. That's why Jesus said, I can't do nothing with you. You ain't cold. You ain't hot. You just kind of existing. This is why people uh, stay home and die when they are sick. You know, somebody, they got pain at the house, something going on, and, and, and they'll stay home, and they'll something to be hurting, and then they'll be hurting for a long time, and they'll be like, Hurting so long, it becomes normal. And they just die at home. When there could have been something, they could have went to the hospital and got it fixed. But, hallelujah, they said, I'm all right. Even though it was pain in their body. They said, I'm all right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm all right. Mm. Mm. Let me tell you, all paths come to an end. And the end of this path 
leads to the gates of hell mm. and eternal death. If you're on this path and, and being led by the flesh and, and you don't see a way out and you, and you can't see a change that you can make in your courts, you want to change your path. You, you, you know, I, I want to change my path. I got an answer for you. Hallelujah. I got a way out for you. There's something called repentance. Hallelujah. And repentance will make a way out of no way. When, you, when you're walking down that path of flesh and, 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 and all the thing you can see is the scrub you're in trees so high you can't even go through it. But if you stop and repent, Jesus will cut a path to the right path. Hallelujah. And it didn't even exist. He'll make a way out of no way when you repent. When you get on his side. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. When you're uh, going down that path and you you want to get off that path and you don't see a way, like I said, repent. And it will create a path for you. It'll be like a, you know, like a beam of light. And it'll, sometime and some days it'll shine down on you. Hallelujah. It'll knock you down to the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or, or, or either somebody across your path. Somebody across your path. Hallelujah. And they'll say, hey, Saul, why persecutest thou? Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. They are across your path. Hey, Saul, what persecuted thou? Believe me. What you need to do is believe in Jesus. Change your thought process. Amen. You ain't making it just on your own. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is even helping you when you're not even asking for help. It wouldn't rain a drop on your crop if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. You wouldn't have a, no food on your table. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ. He says I rain on the just and the unjust. My God. That's what kind of God we serve. We don't serve a God. Hallelujah. That's just that, 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 that. Hallelujah. Mm. That's selfish. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. Let, let, let me move on. My God. Choose your path. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the second path is. I choose to believe, but walk a path from afar off. I choose to believe. I believe God now, but I walk from afar off. Mark uh, 14 and, and 54 says, and Peter followed him afar off. And what this is, this is when they had captured Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and they was taking him to trial and they was trying him whether to whether to uh, 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 hang him on the cross or not, to convict him or not. So Mark 14 and 54 uh, it says, and Peter followed him afar off and him being Jesus. Hallelujah. Even into the palace of the high priest and he sat with the servants and warned himself at the fire when we believe from afar off we act just like Peter do when Jesus was on trial a young girl said to Peter that also was with Jesus of Nazareth and Peter responded and said but he denied 
saying, I know not, neither understand uh, what thou art saying. He was like, oh, you know what? What you talking about? You know how we do. What you talking about? You know how we, 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 when we play dumb? You know, what, what you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> it goes on to say in 69, and a maid saw him again. And began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they stood by, said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them. For thou art a Galilean, and thou speech agreeth thereto. But he began to curse. And to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. This is when you go home to your family reunion and you act like you don't know nothing about Jesus. You do everything the unsaved family members do and a little bit more. Hooking up with your old girlfriend or your old high school boyfriend while, hallelujah, you're in town. Trying to speak the same language they are speaking. But once you have been with Jesus, people can tell. You don't sound like that anymore. <laughs> you don't look like them anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like those people uh, told Peter, uh, I can tell by your speech that you have been with Jesus. Uh, you are one of those Jesus peoples. Uh, I think they call them Jesus freaks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like going up in the, uh, the club uh, after you've been saved. Uh, people can tell you don't belong there. Hallelujah. You, 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 you talk uh, their language. You, uh, you, try, you don't talk their language uh, and you don't look like them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't look like that and you don't belong there. Hallelujah. It's something different about you. Let me tell you what that difference is. That difference is Jesus. Hallelujah. In order to, uh, 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 to attempt to fit in, you start doing foolish things. Doing even more provocative and perverted things than the people that you're with. You know, like Peter did. Peter began to curse and to swear and say, I don't know that man that you speak of. Hallelujah. And then your family your hometown people, hallelujah, and friends will stand back and say, aren't you with that Jesus of Nazarene? I thought you were saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't they tell you, you better go on back home where you belong. Hallelujah. This is the path where you be coming to church but you won't get saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. You sit up under the word, but you never answer the call to salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to look right in my social circle, uh, social circle uh, that I hang out in. This is the path where you go to work and people, they don't even know that you're saved. They don't even recognize nothing different about you. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I'm um, hallelujah. I'm not saying, hallelujah, that you should be at work uh, on your job quoting the scripture and, 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 and every other word that you're saying is thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hallelujah. You don't have to be, be laying hands on everybody that walk by and praying out loud so that people can hear you, so that they'll know that you're saved. I tell you what, if you just follow and do what you're supposed to do, believe me, they'll know that you're saved. Hallelujah. This is the path where church and Jesus, hallelujah, look at on your, uh, your, 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 on your uh, checkbox. This is the path 
hallelujah, where, where church and Jesus is, is just a look at on your checkbox. In other words, you, you come to church this week so I can check it off on the box. Hallelujah. I did that. I got that out the way. Hallelujah. Woo, we got to do better than that. Mm, this is the path that leads and uh, that is led by flesh. This is the path that is led by flesh. Everything along this path is designed to serve your fleshly behavior. That's right. Hallelujah. My God. Let me tell you. All paths come to an end. And the end of this path, path leads to eternal death. My God. It's your choice yes, yes, yes. to choose your path. Yes, yes, yes. Repentance will pull you off the path of death. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Repentance will pull you off the path of death. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us move on. Path number three. The third path, I choose to believe, but I walk contrary. I choose to believe, but I walk on the path of contrary. I'm contrary to God's word. I will read the Bible, quote the scriptures, Believe and get saved. But would not do anything that the word of God says. Thereafter. That's how I get saved. I choose to do everything opposite of the word of God. But yet, I still want to use God. I still want to use him at times. You know, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm stressed out and I need something, I want to use him. Hadn't talked to him in, in, in 52 weeks. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, as, as a, you know, what, what they call that when you have that thought? Oh, yeah, afterthought. that afterthought. Oh, yeah, Jesus. My God, on this contrary path, I stand and preach and teach the word of God, but I never be a, for, a first partaker, hallelujah, of my preaching and teaching. Jesus. Hallelujah. This is that contrary path. I just like preaching and teaching because I enjoy being up in front of people. I enjoy the praises and the accolades that I get. On this contrary path, uh, hallelujah, I, 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 I praise, I, I, I sing and praise the Lord. But I never believe in what I'm singing about. Hallelujah. I just do it because, you guess what, I just love to sing. Hallelujah. On this contrary path, I love the word of God and the people of God. Because they bring me financial gain and great fame and notoriety on that contrary path. Uh, hallelujah. Matthew uh, 15 and 8 said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Uh, better known as lip service uh, or the performing arts. <laughs> hallelujah. This path, uh, hallelujah, that Jesus is speaking of uh, is in Revelation when he says again uh, in uh, 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 3 and 15, I know thou work, thou art neither cold nor hot, uh, and I would that thou art cold or hot, uh, so that thou uh, then because thou art lukewarm, neither, hallelujah, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, this is the path that Jesus said, I will spew thee out 
of my mouth uh, because you're lukewarm. <laughs> You're neither hot nor cold. Uh, you act like uh, you and Jesus are the tightest homies uh, around. Uh, oh, y'all like got the best relationship going on. Uh, but you never talk to him. Uh, and you never do what he says do. Uh, hallelujah. When he uh, tells you to do something. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, my God, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Luke uh, uh, 6 and uh, uh, 46 says, uh, And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do nothing which I say? That's what Jesus said. Just what Jesus was telling them. Tell them at the end of the day, he said, I'm going to cast you into the lake of fire. He said, and why call me? Why call ye me? Lord, Lord. Why are you calling me Lord? You know, if somebody your Lord, you usually you obey them. You don't usually disobey. The, uh, if, if, if you lived in, you know, I guess, I don't know, some, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I know back in the day they had some kingdoms and they had lords over the kingdom. And if you disobeyed the Lord, uh, that was the last thing that you done. <laughs> because you would be put to death. Yeah. He said, why you call me Lord, Lord? And you do nothing that I say do. Oh Jesus, Jesus. And then you walk off and do what you want to do. <laughs> my God. God is saying, why are you doing that? Choose the right path. This is the path that leads, that is led by flesh. Everything along this path is designed to, hallelujah, satisfy the flesh. Yeah. It's designed to keep you moving along. It's designed to have you reaching for the next thing on the path. It's kind of like if you like junk food, uh, 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 fast food, man, it'd be a Burger King and a McDonald's and a Wendy's and a this. Every, 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 every mile, every time you turn your head, it'll be there for you. That's the way the path of sin, the path of flesh. When you're led by the flesh, the things that you desire in your flesh will be set there before you. Boom. It depends on what it is. It depends on what gets you to go. It, it does. Some it may be women and some may be men and some it may be drugs and, and, and some it may be work or, or, or whatever it is. It's designed, let me say it like this, to pull you away from God. Yeah, yeah. It's an enemy to God. It's designed for that. When I, you, you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. It is designed. When somebody designs something, they sit down and sketch it out and yeah. write out a pre-plan to it before they make it. And it, 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 it is, it, it, it is a, a it's, it, it, it's, it's got some ingenuity yeah. into it. That's what Satan does. He puts ingenuity into causing you to fail. Right. Yeah. Look, he, 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 he seeks out that thing that you desire that's sinful. Yeah. That's right. And boy, that path He'll have whatever it is, thousands of them on there. He will. And it's up to you to make a choice to get off of that path. My God, it's up to you to make a choice to get off that path. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you Choose the path. Everybody stand. We're going to end this here. And we'll pick it up again next week. Hallelujah. 
this. Again, I say, I, I, I want, listen, Jesus wants us to pay attention to what I'm saying because he's putting this word out. He wants you to have the best things. He don't want you to be struggling. And, and, and I ain't talking just finances. I'm talking about struggling in your life. Sin causes you to struggle yeah. in your life. There's a scripture that said that the way of a transgressor is hard. Yeah. A sinful life, you may think it's easy. Yeah. Because you get the pleasure. Now, now don't, 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 look, I ain't crazy. Mm -hmm. And then neither none of y'all. We know there's some sin that feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But that still don't make it right. Yeah. Just think about the, you, you know, I, I, we, I, we, I know we always talking about this generation. These, you know, every, I guess every generation probably talk about the generation that was before or after them, right? You know how we, we say this generation, they can't wait for anything. They want everything right now. In other words, they, 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 they don't look at the future of things down the road. I'm trying to get us to look at the future of things down the road. The, the pleasure of sin may be good right now, but at the end thereof is death. And it ain't like there's no pleasure in Jesus. My God, there's a good old time in Jesus. But listen, the thing about it is you have to be in Jesus. See, it's hard straddling the fence. See, if you're in Jesus, then there are things that happen in your life you don't even be worried about it. Amen. Other people be stressing out and hair falling out and all kind of stuff, and and and, and, and you don't even be you know you don't even be worried about it. Amen. I'm trying to, but that happens when you're in Jesus. When you're in Jesus. My God, there is help. And it's all about repentance. If you repent, and repentance means to turn away from your sin. Ask God, God, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And he'll do it. He'll cleanse you up. My God. He will clean you up. That's why he says there's no condemnation. Hallelujah. To those that are in Christ. My God. No condemnation. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. I'm asking right now. For those that are on YouTube and Facebook. I'm speaking to you also. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you should get to know. You should give your life over to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know things are going all right in your life right now. But listen, keep living. Hallelujah. Keep living. And you know what? The most important thing is when you die. When your body is not living anymore. But it's your spirit man. Where would it be? Where will you open up your eyes? Hallelujah. My God. If you desire prayer, hallelujah. Call us at 706-257-3022. Again, 706-257-3022. If you desire prayer, if you desire to be saved, if you, hallelujah, desire prayer for a healing, hallelujah, whatever prayer that you need, we're here for you. 
just make the call. Hallelujah. If you're here in the temple and you desire prayer, you can come forth. Hallelujah. If you need Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, if you need to go down in Jesus' name and be filled with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost, you can come forth on this day. Yes. Hallelujah. There's water to baptize you with. And we're here standing in the gap to tarry with you that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come, anyone. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With uplifted hands. Father, we thank you and we praise you on this day. We magnify you and we exalt you. Oh, you're an awesome God. And, and God, I do appreciate you, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you how you're dealing with us, God. Hallelujah. How you're cleaning us up, getting us ready, preparing us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Preparing us for a good work. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, touch those, God. Hallelujah, that, that you wanted me to speak to, God. Touch them right now, God. Even though they didn't move out right now, God, in the name of touch them right now, God. Hallelujah. Cause a work to come about, God. God, change their path. My God, change their path, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Choose your path.